fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains fought crime and criminals throughout the early western United States. No one could match his courage, strength, or daring, and the stories of his deeds have come down to us through the generations. Return with us now those thrilling days of yesteryear and relive one of his most thrilling adventures. Lamont, general superintendent of the powerful Transcontinental Stage and Express Company, had planned to stay but a short time in Cooperstown. The death of the division manager at that point, however, combined with the unexpected success of the opposition provided by Jim Plummer, owner of a small rival stage line, had lengthened his visit. As our story opens, we see him walking toward the cafe. With him is Dowd, who had sold Transcontinental the bank he controlled. Lamont is speaking, and... Before I can act, Dowd, I've got to find out the real identity of this fellow who calls himself Wild Bill Riley. If it hadn't been for him, I'd have beaten young Plummer long ago. Did, uh, did you say you thought maybe he might be the Lone Ranger, Mr. Lamont? I've got good reason to suspect it, but I can't be certain. Well, how are you ever going to find out if he's the Lone Ranger or some other fellow? <laughs> That's what I'm going to the cafe for. He's there now. Yeah? You've had experience with men and money, Dowd. How many would you say couldn't be bought? Bought? You know what I mean. How many men are there who'd refuse to sell out their friends or turn on their principles for the right price? Oh, Mr. Lamont, I see now what you got in mind. But I wouldn't do it if I was you, no siree. For if he's really the Lone Ranger, you wouldn't be able to buy him off, not by a long sight. <laughs> of course I won't. Then how do you I can offer him almost any price, Dowd. If he refuses, then I can be practically certain he's the Lone Ranger and act accordingly. And if he don't refuse, Mr. Lamont? <laughs> then I'll know he's not the Lone Ranger and, uh, again, act accordingly. Yeah, yes, I reckon. Come on in. <laughs> I'll soon know which way to act. Howdy, Mr. Lamont. Afternoon, Dowd. Howdy, Bob. Hello there, Jeff. Good afternoon, men. There he is, Dowd. He's sitting alone by the window. Stay here. I'll join you afterwards. Yeah, yes, Mr. Lamont. I'll wait. Riley. Oh, howdy, Lamont. Mind if I join you? Should I? <laughs> Well, Bill, I wouldn't say we'd been the best of friends. You might have objected. Uh-huh. I might have. <laughs> You're not an easy man to talk to. Oh, you want to talk to me, eh? Certainly. Well, talk then. I won't stop you. How would you like to work for me? I got a job. With Jim. 
Look, Bill, you're on the wrong side. You're on the side that's bound to lose out at the finish. Plummer hasn't got a hundred part of the resources available to Transcontinental. Come over on our side. Work with me. Be sure of winning, and at the same time, be sure of your money. And let Jim go hang, eh? Which he'll do eventually at any rate. You can only delay it. Hmm. I got to admit that sounds real good. You do it. Not so fast, Lamont. What I started to say is that this here proposition of yours sounds good in the same way a skunk looks good. But if you've ever met up with a skunk, I reckon you know their looks are plumb deceitful. I guess this ain't no different. A thousand dollars in gold the minute you join me. Nope. Two thousand. Can't hear you. I, uh, name your own price. I guess you'd better clear out. You're turning me down? For a fellow as smart as you've been telling me you are, it took you quite a while to get that same through your head. Uh-huh, I am, flat. You're a fool. Maybe you're a mite overwrought. Maybe you didn't mean that. I'll give you a chance to change your opinion. Change it? I haven't told you the half. You're a fool, and I'll smash you along with your friend Jim Plummer. You shouldn't have said that. I'm leaving. Get out of my way. And you shouldn't have shoved me. I'll do what I please. I'll warn you once more to get out of my way. I told you I'm leaving. Without changing what you just said? I meant every word. Then I reckon you'd better leave. I... Hey! Open the window! Oh. What happened? Bill tossed them on through the window. Look at him sprawled out there. <laughs> you ever see anybody look so doggone disgusted? <laughs> I've been hoping that hombre would get what he's been asking for. You, you will wish you hadn't done that. Uh, howdy, Mr. Dowd. You better see if your pard needs any attention. <laughs> you blast Bill! Bill. Hi, Bill! Hey, look at here, Jim! Look at Jim! Bill just helped Lamont take a quick way outside. <laughs> well, there he is, picking himself up. That Lamont's look out. I got other things to tend to. Bill. Yeah? We're going to Marysville. Huh? Something's up. I got to see the United States Marshal there. What for? It's important, but that's all I know till we get there. But can't you Come tell... on, no time for talking now. The stage is waiting and we got to get. <laughs> The journey by stage to Marysville consumed the better part of a week. When Jim Plummer and the Lone Ranger, whom Jim knew only as Wild Bill Riley, finally entered the office of the United States Marshal, they realized from the grave expression on his face that bad news awaited them. Matt, this here's my friend, Bill Riley. Howdy. Bill Riley, huh? I've heard of you. Well, sit down, fellas. Yeah, thanks. Look, Matt, I got your message. What's up? Plenty. Yeah? Word ain't got out about it yet. I don't know but what I'm exceeding my authority by telling you ahead of time. But I worked for your paw once, young fella, and I think you ought to know. Know what? Well, go ahead and tell me. Well, Jim, when old Yellow Fox attacked your coaches, it stirred up plenty of trouble. It wasn't enough that the soldiers caught him. Everybody around raised a holler that something had to be done. Well, I, I don't savvy. Folks said as long as the engines were close by, nobody'd be safe. But, uh... So they wrote clear to Washington to the commissioners for engine affairs. And now Major Rhodes tells me it's been decided them engines will have to put on a reservation. They'll be moved back into the Sandy Buttes country. Well, how does that affect Jim here? Well, they've got to have water. Yeah, but what's And the that... only way they can get it is by turning Big Fork River back into its old channel. Back into... Oh, Matt... They can't do that to me. Well, I'm sorry, Jim, but they're gonna. They're gonna just as sure as I'm standing here. But they promised me... Son, think back, and you'll recollect there wasn't nothing promised. You asked for permission to divert the river. You got it because the water wasn't needed here in Marysville. And there weren't nobody in the Sandy Butte section to use it. But now it'll be different. Them redskins will be there. Besides, you agreed when the time come, you'd turn the river back yourself. Sure. When I could afford to drill wells for my stations. Uh, I know, Jim. Uh, just a second. Jim, I ain't sure I see what's wrong. You know, your state stations got wells? From Cooperstown to Paiute Springs, yes. And from Marysville to Gold Flats. But between Paiute Springs and Marysville, all four stations get their water from the river. You see, Jim dammed it and sent it flowing east. It cost him only about half what drilling wells would have. And serve just as good. But it still costs a plenty. Yeah, I know. And it'll cost me as much to change it back again. Pay for a dozen men. 
grub and supplies and blasting powder and mules to pack the now, stuff. Hold on. Jim, why do you have to pay for all that? Ooh, that's what was agreed. He turned the river at his own expense. And when the time come, he was to change it back again the same way. But I always thought they'd wait till I could afford it. You got some cash, Jim. You... Oh, I can pay for the job, sure, but then those stations will be without water again. And to get water, I'll have to drill, and drilling costs money, too. I can pay for one or the other, but I can't pay for both. <laughs> Won't Lamont and Vance Continental be glad to hear this? Well, then, uh, if I was you, Jim, I wouldn't let on till I'd borrowed the cash I needed. Borrow? Who loaned to me? Lamont's already took care of that. The polecat's really been putting the spurs to you, huh? There ain't a thing in the world he wouldn't do to bust me. Well, now, look here, fellas. Yeah? I'm going to ask both of you to keep this under your hats for a bit. I've got to have time to figure something out. I told you I was exceeding my authority telling you about this before I was supposed to, so uh, I won't talk. And you needn't worry about me, Jim. But uh, what do you plan on? Oh, I wish I knew. The masked man helped me out of the last scrape I was in. And so I heard tell. But this is just a case where I got only half the cash that's needed. And making two dollars from one is a trick nobody could work. Not even the Lone Ranger. Almost another week passed, and then early one evening, the door to Lamont's hotel room opened without warning, and... Riley. Surprised to see me, Lamont? You... Don't reach for that gun. I'll show no, you. No, you don't. You kill her. You're not hurt. You... Quiet. There's nothing wrong in here. No need to raise a fuss. Just go on about your business. Lamont and me aim to talk alone. Well, maybe we can talk business. You and I have no business together, Riley. Well, I figure we have. You made me a proposition some time ago, one afternoon over the cafe. And you refused it. What'd you think I'd do in public? If you're up to some trick... That'll be for you to judge. I... Well, sit down. We'll talk standing. All right, we'll talk. Maybe I can use you. After what's happened, though, I'm not trusting you. Yeah, suit yourself. And you don't see one penny of my money until after you've proven yourself. Good enough. Now let's figure a way to prove I'm on your side. The visit of the man known as Wild Bill Riley with Lamont aroused both comment and curiosity. An hour later, one of Jim Plummer's employees stood in the parlor of the Plummer home talking to Jim and his mother. I hope to die if I ain't telling you the truth, Jim. And you too, ma'am. I'll swear to it. Sounds like a pack of lies to me. No, it ain't. My word on it. You know me, ma'am. I ain't want to be saying what ain't so. Foundation, I know you're all right. And you're the worst gossip in all the females in this town together. No, that ain't fair. Wait, ma'am. Ma. Bill has been acting funny lately. Acted funny the whole trip back from Marysville and wouldn't explain why, neither. You mean to stand there and say you're doubting the best friend we got? You did that once before, Jim, and you look powerful foolish on account of it afterwards. Oh, but Lamy heard him. Didn't hear everything, Jim. Wish I could have, though. They were sure scheming something together. <laughs> I bet you had your ear glued to that door like it'd been nailed. No, there. man. No need to argue. There's just one thing to do. Tell Bill what we've heard and ask for an explanation. Which say maybe he'll give you and maybe he won't. But if Bill was me and you was my friend and I figured you was doubting me, I'd tell you to go to blazes. <laughs> That's him now. Don't you tell that on that I told you. Don't him. worry. I'd like to. And stand by watching while he give you your needing. Evening, folks. Bill? Yeah. What's ailing you three? Look like you had something sour. I'm going to ask you a question. Why, sure, ask away. Bill, have you gone over to Lamont's side? Well, you heard me. Why don't you answer? You really want the answer to that, Jim? And if I didn't, I would have asked. Well? Nope, I'm sorry. That's something I can't answer. Then that means you have. Sorry. Oh, Bill. Bill, you wouldn't do this to me. Just tell me what I heard ain't so, and I'll take your word for it. Sorry. Then you don't leave me no choice. No? If you can't deny it, then it's true. But, Bill, no matter what Jim says, I know doggone well it ain't. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. 
Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Continue our story. It was later that same night that the Lone Ranger drew Scout to a halt beside a well hidden camp in the woods north of Cooperstown. Whoa, Scout, whoa, whoa, boy. Evil Sabi. Oh, you've gone a long time. It's been necessary, Tonto. I can still do more good playing the part of Wild Bill Riley than I could by resuming my mask. Uh. And the more often I ride here, the greater the possibility I'll be followed. It happened before when it served our purpose. The next time, we might not get off so well. That's right. There's no question but what Lamont suspects my identity. So far, he's been afraid to to speak. What you do? Jim Plummer's in more trouble, Tonto. This time, it's not caused either by Lamont or Transcontinental. If they learned of it, they could turn it to their own advantage. Uh Ah. That can't be permitted to happen. And that's your job. What you want Tonto to do? Listen carefully. As soon as I've finished, I'm returning to town. Uh Ah. Right now, I'm trying to convince Lamont that I'm on his side. I doubt that he believes it. But he'll give me a chance to prove I am, and that's all I ask. You got plans? I have. And there's no time now to go into details. Uh. Just do this. I'll be leaving Cooperstown soon with a party of men. While I'm gone, keep an eye on Lamont. And report at once if you hear any rumors at all concerning the Big Fork River. Understand? Any rumors at all. Me, Sammy. I'll see you as soon as I can. Come on, Scout. Come on. During the next two days, Lamont ordered certain mysterious activities, which he covered by explaining they had to do with the business of the company he represented. But early on the morning of the third day, a group of men quietly gathered outside town. One of these was the Lone Ranger, disguised as Wild Bill Riley. When Lamont and Dowd joined them, they dismounted to listen to Lamont's orders. Everything set, boss. Very well. Bill. Yeah? Before you start out, I want certain things understood. Sure. In the first place, every man here is acquainted with your errand. They know the purpose of this expedition. They've been told, and I'm repeating it in front of all, so there can't be a mistake. They've been told you're in command. If I wasn't, I wouldn't sit out. But you're in command only so long as your commands further the purpose we've named. Any attempt to give orders contrary to that purpose will mean these men are no longer bound to obey you. I figured that was understood by all of us before. But I'm making it stronger. At the first sign of treachery on your part, they'll disarm you and bring you back to me as a prisoner. Oh, sure. Now then, I'd suggest you cut away from the trail and make for the hills by a route where you'll not meet others. I got just the proper way to go in mind right now. All right. That's all I have to say. Get mounted, boys. We're hitting the trail. How long do you expect to be gone? That's hard to say. Maybe two weeks, maybe three. It won't be an hour longer than we have to. Then here's a thought to keep with you, Bill. Yeah? I like successful men. I pay them highly. That's just horse sense. But I never forgive a failure. Well, I can't say whether that's horse sense or not. All right, boys, let's get on our way. Adios, Lamont. Get up, Scout. One week passed, then another. And still young Jim Plummer had found no answer to the problem that faced him. As our scene opens, he and his mother are at their evening meal. Jim, staring at the food upon his plate without interest, dropped his fork, pushed back his chair, and... Oh, it ain't no use me pretending, Ma. I ain't got the appetite of an ailing sparrow. Now, Jim, that's no way to act. I just can't help it. What in blazes am I going to do? I've tried to borrow money, even knowing it couldn't be done. And it can't. Every bank in the territory that knows me well enough to loan it is scared of Transcontinental. They wouldn't give me the lend of a dime for a dollar security. Hey, you done nothing at all but go traipsing around the banks. Well, I've set men to digging wells for the stations between Paiute Springs and Marysville. How much will it cost you? Everything we've saved. There won't be a penny left over. I wonder if you ain't gone hunting for trouble. It won't ever happen. Hmm? What do you mean? Land's sake, son. You don't even know for certain sure yet that them redskins are going to be put on a reservation. And if they are, maybe it won't be over in the Sandy Butte section. And if it so be, they are moved there. Well, and maybe something can be arranged where you won't have to put the whole bill for changing the river back into the old channel. 
sure any one of a dozen things could come up to fix your trouble. Oh, I wish they could. I said they can. I'm sorry, Ma, but I know better. I've been keeping in touch with Matt. He gets his information straight from Major Rhodes, and Rhodes is a good friend of the engine commissioner. Everything's fixed except the official notification. I'm, I'm expecting that most any time. Well, it still ain't come yet. Oh, I wish... Huh? I wish I knew where to locate the Lone Ranger. He's on my side, or at least the way as he was once. I bet he could think of something. I declare sometimes I think you don't deserve no help. But, Ma... The Lone Ranger, the masked man and that white horse of his... To hear you tell it, you'd think there weren't nobody in the whole wide world to compare with that masked hombre. But you know what he done before. Yeah, and I know what Wild Bill done, too. But Bill, he ain't good enough for you. He only got the mail franchise for you and tricked Transcontinental in half a dozen different ways. Too doggone bad he don't wear a mask, too. Then maybe you'd have some appreciation for him. Well, how can you say that when you know Bill's been bought up by Lamont? Don't know anything of the kind. And if I did, I still wouldn't believe it. Then where's he been all this time while he knows the fix I'm in? Suppose you ask him when he gets back. And quit crying about your bad luck. Do like Bill does. Get out and fight. I... Uh... Answer that. Mm -hmm. Just a second. Oh, Matt. Matt, what brings you clear down here? Uh, we're sent here, Jim. Sent here? Good evening, Matt. Oh, you look right tired and dusty. Step in and sit. Mm, howdy, ma'am. Nope. You better hear what I got to say first. Maybe then I won't be so welcome. Spit it out. Well, it's all been decided. The engines are being moved onto the reservation. Jim, I'm here representing the law, though I ain't got much stomach for the job. Go on. You got a week in which to begin work on the river. If you don't start by a then... A week? If you don't start by then, the government will do the job. Assess you for the costs and take over your stage line till the claim is satisfied. Great day. All right, Matt. Tell him to take over my line. Tell him to bust me. Tell him I can go smash a thousand times easier than I can raise the cash to pay them costs. Oh, well, that's that. You've done your duty. Now, come on, have some grub. <laughs> The following day, the Lone Ranger and Red reined in their tired mounts before Transcontinental's offices in Cooperstown. Whoa, Scout. Whoa, boy. Whoa, 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 whoa. 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 Hurry up. Lead on. Boss. Yeah, are back. Uh, now, we done it, boss. We done it. That right, Bill? Sure is. Were you seen? Could anybody tie it to you in any way? Not at all. Mr. Lamont, I'm free to confess I didn't cotton much to you putting Bill here in charge. But I'm taking it all back. He done the slickest job I ever seen. Bill, I keep my promises. You'll get the money, do you? Uh-huh. <laughs> You're uh, both absolutely sure you can't be suspected? Uh, not a chance in the world. Then we can tell Jim Plummer you men just rode by and noticed what had happened by accident. <laughs> Come on. I want to see that fellow's face when he hears the news. The next day, the United States Marshal stood beside Jim as the latter stared glumly from the window of the modest office belonging to his gold flat stage line and... Jim, I sure wish I could help somehow. I know you would if you could, Matt. It's just my bad luck is all. You tried talking with Major Rhodes? Oh, I talked to him, sure. But that's no good. He's a soldier. He gets his orders and he obeys them without asking questions. Besides, there ain't no denying them redskins belong on a reservation. It's just a doggone shame you got to be bust by it. Yeah, I... What's the matter? Wild Bill Riley. The skunk that turned again you? Where? Riding this way with Lamont and another fella. Him? They coming here? If they do, they sure got their nerve. Uh... Wait. Well, that's what they're doing. This is where they was headed for. Look at that grin on Lamont's face. I bet he's heard what's happened. I never told nobody but you. That kind of news don't ever take long to get around. Yeah, here they come. Come in, Bill. Come along, Red. Uh, <laughs> Afternoon, Marshal. Hello there, Jim. Just thought I'd drop by and tell you how sorry I am to hear about your misfortune. <laughs> You're about as sorry as you'd be if I gave you the stage line for nothing. Oh, you seem to have heard about it already. Red, I thought you and Bill were the first ones in town after it happened. Yes, I don't know how. Don't he... worry how I found out. 
I'd like to know how you found out. <laughs> oh, Bill and Red here noticed it coming back from Marysville. Isn't that what you told me? Sure, boss. Noticed it? They wouldn't blaze as you talking about. They got the news up on posters? I'm afraid I don't Hold understand. On. Sounds to me like you fellas are talking about two different things. Maybe I can clear this up. You, you dirty double-crosser. <laughs> now, don't get hasty, Jim. You might want to take that back. You see, Lamont's laughing because the Big Fork River's back in its old channel. It strikes him funny to think your stage stations between Paiute Springs and Marysville won't have no more water. What? What'd you say? <laughs> you heard him. Your dam must have weakened. The river is following its original course. <laughs> tough luck, Jim. Mighty tough. Bill! Bill, what'd you have to do with this? Why, Jim, I'm the fellow Lamont hired to blast your dam and put the river back where it belongs. Well, Why, Bill! Bill! Bill. Cool. You can't prove that. You know what I told you. Marshal, he's lying. He's not a bit of million he ain't. You can't hold me to blame. To blame? Why, Lamont, I'm thanking you. You've done me a favor. Oh, what? Boss, he must be hit so hard he's going low. For I don't know what oh, you... But you two fellas don't savvy. The river had to be turned back. The government was going to do it and take over my stage line till the job was paid for. But you beat him to it and saved me from going smash. Bill, you tricked me after all. Yeah? And I'm going to tell you. Careful. I'm Just going hold to... on, Lamont. You're in a pretty bad spot. You claim you had nothing to do with turning back the river like you figured on first. And you can't accuse me of nothing either. Are you... What's more, you can't charge Jim for the expense you went to. Bill, I, I had you figured all wrong. Now, wait a second, Jim. Lamont, if you decide the other way, you decide to admit you're responsible for blowing up the dam... Then you've done it without permission, with the intention of hurting Jim by it, and you'll be open to jailing. Now make up your mind. Which is it going to be? You're going to keep shut and swallow your medicine, or talk too much and go to jail besides? Red, let's get out of here. Sure, Mr. Lamont. You fellas think you've been mighty slick about this, but I'm not beaten yet. <laughs> Bill, you clip that hombre's wings so doggone close he's aching all over. Gosh, Bill, I... I know there ain't no use apologizing. No use and no need. We're friends, Jim. And the best of friends have their misunderstandings. We'll forget what's past and look out for what Lamont will be scheming in the future. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.